What's going on guys, it's your boy Ooch, and as always, we are back again, once again, for another exciting, thrilling, full power podcast here on the Uchi Games channel. And as promised, continuing off episode one, here we got episode two, and joining us again is none other than the infamous, the big booty daddy, he is the guy... (laughs) Big Geekdom bad booty daddy. <laughs> All right, it's big bad booty daddy. Now, before we started recording, you yes. told me that you insisted that I call you that if we started recording. You insisted that I call you Coochie Games because you get so. No, much whoa, no, 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 no. Is that I don't know. true? Now, is that Hell true? Do you, no. Do you still want me to call you Coochie because you get so much of it? No, th- no, no. Please, no. This the man def- legitimately said that before we started recording. He wants me to call him Coochie Games because he gets so much of it. That's what I, he said. So. I, I promise all of you that's definitely not what happened. That, you say you don't get any of it? All right. I'm sure they'll believe that, being a Dragon Ball and wrestling fan. Uh, yeah, well, I am I am happily committed to one What's his lucky name? lady. No, I'm wow! Kidding. No, I'm kidding, bro. <laughs> all right. Oh, my God. We're starting this off on, the, on, 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 a, on a very interesting note. Yeah, yeah, yes, and 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 you know what? It's it, it's it's great to have you back as always, uh, thus far on uh, all of the endeavors that I've been undertaking with. You know, this is not the first time, of course. You've been on episode one. You've been on the Yeet Elite podcast that I have. That's more focused on everything outside of Dragon Ball. Um, so yeah, so welcome back again and. Thanks for being a man of your word, sticking to what you said. Yes, you'll be back for episode two, and here you are. Let's episode talk about two. it. Yeah, Broly with spoilers now, correct? Yes, Broly with spoilers. So um, so first and foremost, to kind of just jump right into it, um, your overall thoughts on the film, what you liked, what you didn't like, and you can, of course... You know, tell us. You know, you can say any kind of spoilers because at this point, this is like almost a week after the release, and you know, a lot of people have seen it uh, by now. So go right ahead and let it rip. Well, I mean, just off the top of the head here, because there's a lot to talk about, and I've done lots of videos on it. Um, mm-hmm. I liked obviously the animation, the soundtrack, the production was all fantastic. Um, I liked the way that Broly was written. Obviously, the fight scenes were incredible. I liked the color, uh, how colorful it was. I liked uh, Frieza's character. I liked the performances. When I first saw the movie, I said that I thought Battle of Gods was probably a bit better. Now that I've seen it about nine times, I can tell you that I'm not sure if this beats... I'm not sure if it beats... Um... Battle of Gods, but it might like I, it's it's right there. It might, I might like it more than Battle of Gods at this point because it really is a fun movie to watch, and I haven't gotten tired of it yet. Every time I watch it with a different audience, it gets more and more fun. Um, what I did not like um, the begin the first act, the stuff in the past felt very disjointed. It felt like um, uh, things were cut out, uh, and that I did not like. At all. That's probably right. the main complaint was that. Like, th- there's parts of the movie you can tell they cut stuff out. And I wish I wish we had the entire, uh, you know, the entire uh, script or, or, a, or a director's cut. Because we talked about this, you and I, about them possibly having a director's cut. I didn't hear anything about that, so I don't think they're going to do it. But there's definitely a bigger script out there Toriyama wrote. So I want to know what was cut because there's a lot of stuff that I think was cut. Yeah, man. <clears throat> I think that, like, if they were to do a director's cut... Because remember, you know, the the original script was three hours. Yes, of course. And, you know, the movie was an hour and 40 minutes. So that's like essentially half. A little, right yeah. There. Yeah, about half. A little more than half. A little yeah, more a little half. more than half. So it's like you would imagine, like, if they were to actually fill in that three hours, that would essentially it's a be a massive like, movie, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's way longer than, you know, just. Any old director's cut, like you figure, like a director's cut will have like a couple ad- additional scenes. That's like a whatever. Lord of the Rings director's cut where they have like an extra forty five minutes, right? Like that kind of director's cut. Yeah, like that's. I mean, hey, I wouldn't complain. I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't either. But I'd watch a three hour Dragon Ball movie. Yeah, in a heartbeat. But you know, of course, I w- you would think that you know, I, I, I the, the the likeliness of it happening is pretty slim because, I mean, but then again, they have the budget for it, so who knows, like, they, you know, they'd have to bring back everything, everyone into the booth and, you know, you know, record new stuff if that's, if they didn't already, you know, because I don't think No, they, I would have I known about it already. 
Yeah, so there you go. So you I hate to, I hate to say it, but I would have heard about it already. Yeah, they have yeah. not recorded anything. Yeah, so it would be cool, but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. But we could, you, you know, if they're going to bring Broly into the anime once that um, comes back around, we can only hope that that is when the three hour or the director's cut, if you will, will take place. You know, so that way we get to see what we missed out on. And I feel like that would make the most sense outside of them, you know, releasing the light novel, which again, the which light is, novel. The light novel does not have anything that's not in the movie, though. I was, yeah. I was, that actually irritated me because I thought the novel would have more scenes, but it really yeah. doesn't. Yeah, like there was only like one minor thing from what I was, well, what I found out. Um, there was a couple that, things, but not anything like a whole scene, you know? What yeah, I mean? it wasn't like anything like overly significant or anything like that, which, I mean, that. It's a kind of, yeah, it is a letdown. Not gonna lie, because I'm actually I I don't I haven't read a single light novel for any animes before, and this is the, the or, first no or time. any movie right that didn't have extra yeah. stuff right. Yeah, and I and I you know I was I was actually looking forward to it a lot. Now I'm kind of like ugh. Well, if I do get it, it's probably just gonna be for collector purposes anyway. But like now it's like oh I don't really have a point anymore. If it's just the same, it's just all text and nothing to go with it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I'm, dude, Dragon Ball is so visual. Yeah. I don't know if I could see myself re- I mean, I guess I could if it's really, really good. I don't know if I'd have fun reading that. Yeah, I, it's just, that's the thing. It, 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 we'd have to find out with the actual book in our hands and then, you know, start reading and see where it goes from there, to be honest, because I, I, like I said, I have not read any other light novels or novels for any of the other like animes that I am into. Like I have a few of the Naruto ones, but I haven't even opened any of them up yet. I just have them. Right. Um, no, I, I, I've heard, but I've never read any of that stuff. Now, um, the other things I did not like is there's a couple of plot holes, like the dragon only granting one wish. That is a plot hole. It's supposed to grant three wishes. That mm-hmm. kind of irritated me. We also never found out how Sheila found out about the Dragon Balls, but maybe that's because um, maybe that was cut. I mean, I don't know. There's yeah. there's so many possibilities. I I do not know. Uh, that's I mean, other than that, the movie's a fun movie. I mean, I don't like the retcon of Dragon Ball minus. I've never liked that at all. Uh, the Bardock yeah. story. Bardock is way more likable in this movie than he was in minus, but I still don't think he's as cool as he was in the original special. Uh, so there's things like that, but Broly's character was handled tremendously. You want to love the guy. You love the character of Broly in this movie. He is the protagonist. He is yes. Goku and Vegeta in some ways are the villains, not because they're bad people, but they're kind of his enemy. Like this is the story of Broly first and right. foremost. And I love the space opera stuff. Paragus trying to find the kid and like the stuff with those monsters. But again, it feels like they were building to something and we didn't really get it. And I wonder how much was cut from that stuff too. Yeah, man, like there's a there's there's a a lot that, you know, we could, you know, just go back and forth on like, oh, I wonder if this happened in between this or I wonder if this potential scene could have happened. Like one thing I know I I was wondering after the movie um happened that, you know, I'm kind of also looking at the anime to see if they actually do something with it is that once Broly gets saved by uh, Chilai's wish and he gets sent back to Vampa. He went um, and had sex with her right away. No. <laughs> You know it's going to happen eventually, though. Well, uh, we'll get to that. Look, we'll you get said, to that. You said that you're happily with someone, right? Now, yes. does your girl look at you the same way she looked at him when he freaking killed that monster, bro? Because she gave him the look. You know what I'm no, talking about? No, no, no. That, see, okay. All right. I guess we're going to have to talk about that now. But she in my opinion... That was a look of like awe and fear. I don't think no. It was... Yeah, that was no. a look of I want to have your babies. No, really? she gave him you, the look, dude. You she think so? Him. I do. Honestly, God, I do. Yes, dude. Oh man, like that. see, like I, you okay? You you to your credit, you watched it, John, nine times. I've only seen it three, and and the the last two that I watched it was ba- literally back to back. I saw it. Standard definition, then I drove 40 minutes to go see it in IMAX on the, the day it came out. And it was it was really cool of an experience. I've never done that for any movie before. By the way, real quick breaking news. This is totally unrelated, but I guess Cena hurt his ankle on Raw last week, so he might be out of WrestleMania. So they're down Cena, Roman, and Triple H, dude. Wow. Unless well, his ankle gets better, bro. Damn, dude. <laughs> Talk about bad luck. This is one of those cursed shows. Anyways, let's keep going about Broly. Okay, so with Chilai, I like when she when she saw Broly go ape, 
well, I'm not gonna say it, but when when because I'm trying to get not literally easy. ape, yeah, ape, yeah, yeah like, I know. No, like when 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 he when he went crazy, right, and he was like screaming. That I don't I don't think she was I, I don't I don't I really didn't see that as she was turned on by him at all. And then plus afterwards, he, she still didn't like you know. She didn't hug him, or she didn't like hold on to him, or anything like that. Like we don't see any of that. No, and uh, it, we're, we're 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 not gonna see it. But it, look, listen, I'm not talking about when he went ape. I'm talking about when he went crazy. When, when she first sees him on Namek or Namek on Vampa, and he kicks that monster, and and they had the music, dun -dun, dun -dun, yeah, and she's like, yeah, yeah. And I then like, song. and then in the movie, right? She's so invested in him, bro. She's like, oh, let's go to his planet. She loves him, bro. Why would you say let's go to his planet and and possibly risk the Frieza force coming after you if she wasn't in love? Dude, she wants him, bro. Bad. Well, well, all right. Well, like I said, we'll see. And if Bro happens, is going to lose his virginity at like 45 years old, dog. <laughs> to, to space Yo. Bulma. Oh, my. Yeah. Yo, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I'm over here thinking, I'm like, dude, this is... This is legitimately Space Bulma, like straight up. That's her, man. She's Space Bulma. I can't wait for her and Bulma to actually have like a an altercation in Dragon Ball Super in the future, bro. Because you know the that's going to happen. haircut, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar hair. They got that whole rambunctious, and they're both really horny, bro, for Saiyans. I, I, I guess. <laughs> I she guess. She wants Broly, bro. Come on. That, if you don't believe me, go to Fun Sexy's Twitter, bro. 18 up only, and you'll see how much she wants him, bro. Okay. Because well, everything <laughs> she draws is canon, if you ask me, bro. I, swear, yeah. I hate using that word, but it's canon if Fun Sexy draws it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Especially All the right. Goku Chichi stuff. Yeah, well, the one. Okay, so another thing, uh, since we're on the top of Chalai, then. I feel like they were obviously they knew what they were doing. They but showed you remember, her ass like do you remember five that part? times, bro. I was like, why are they showing how curvy she really Be isn't? Because and they want you to be jealous of Broly, dog. They're like, oh, Broly's about to smash that, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. He better now. Nah, she better be careful because if he's hitting and his eyes turn yellow, she might be dead, bro. So she's got to be careful with that. You know what I'm talking about? I. Yes. This guy does kind of tend to lose his mind a little bit, bro. So she better she better not tighten it up. So never mind. We're getting too dirty here. But all right. Anyways, <laughs> I don't Shit. care. No, I love the character of Sheila, dude. Um, and and you're right. Nagamine totally sexualized her. Yeah, yeah. Cause I it was it was so random. Like it just happened like out of nowhere. Like. She like they just had her at that one angle where it's like you know her butt was just sticking out like you know and it looked a lot right. more robust than it normally did because oh, she's it was she, huge. She I mean she's like a she's a little thing you know she's not like yeah she, but she's look, also thick too bro let's be real she thick she can get she, it she she's thick in the fan art that's you know and then the one part where she like snaps her her chest piece or whatever right. Everyone right. popped. Everyone popped at that, and everyone popped at well, not even popped, but like you can hear all the guys in the audience were like, "Damn!" Like whenever, like when when they had like her butt shot, I right. thought that was like, I thought it was funny because I was like, "Wow!" And and for each theater that I was in, so the three theaters, everyone had different reactions at different parts, and. I, and, really? Because for me, everybody reacted the same thing. Stardust yeah. Breaker, SS uh, God Vegeta, um, uh, Paragus dying. They all had kind of the same reaction. Yeah, I felt so. I, I mentioned this on my Twitter. Like after I wrote like a whole thread uh, based on the experience that I had seeing it. Um, you know, on the day of the release, January sixteenth, and like I, I felt like comparing it to my New York City premiere experience. Like, that audience was, like, the true, hardcore, passionate Dragon Ball fans. That I mean, obviously, they were all invited, you know, you know, particularly, like, handpicked by Funimation. Um, and, you know, they, they were all there for, you know, the reason to, to, to see the early screener, to, to be hype, and then, obviously, to spread the good word and just to make sure that everyone's still, if they're not sure, that at that point they would definitely be buying those tickets um, you know, to go see the movie once it comes out. Now, like that that time when I saw the very first time, everyone was loud, everyone was hype, everyone was laughing at all the jokes, all the comedy, all the humor. When all the power ups and the crazy fighting was going on, everyone was just freaking yelling and screaming. Like, dude, my brother and I, we're literally like holding each other when like Pause. the cheat. <laughs> oh my god, hold like. 
Dude, you, you, I don't know if you've seen any of my reaction videos, but when some when stuff starts going down, we start jumping and it, and it, we go crazy because we can't we cannot help ourselves and we get hype. And no, that's exactly. I mean, what that, but it wasn't just you. I mean, the Dragon Ball fans. It really mm. did have a rock concert atmosphere. It's like when you go see Avengers opening night. Like it did have a rock concert atmosphere. Yeah. And sometimes they can be annoying. Like there are some showings that I heard that um, people were really obnoxious, talking and um, clapping at everything. Clap at the good stuff, not at everything. I never clap. Yeah. During, I never clap because I don't. I don't clap during movies. But, <laughs> but. Um, I love when people are into stuff. I do. Yeah. The one thing that annoys me when you go see a movie, a Dragon Ball movie, mm -hmm. is the one prick. And in this case, I didn't have that in my theater. But I've heard people had them in their theater that's doing nothing but quoting freaking Team Four Star. That's like the most annoying thing. Wow. Dude. Yeah. That like, is really annoying. Oh, my God. I have nothing against the bridge, but their fan base in some cases can be just chill out, dude. Chill out. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I can agree with that. But thankfully, the the other two theaters that I saw it at, no one, there was none of that. And the one thing that I did want to point out was that there was a lot. Like I could, it's almost like I could tell, like how deep of a fan you were of, of right. Dragon Ball as a whole. Like you when know? Ultra Instinct happened, some people react to some didn't. Yeah, or even like and when the they show Bard, jokes. when they show Gine and people, if if you pop that Gine, you yes. know you you're yes. a hardcore fan, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Like she came out, and then like like some people, like it, it was like it was like quiet. I was like, what? Like hello? But like that's Goku's people, mom? Yeah, but some people knew. Especially at the premiere. Yeah. The premiere was all hardcore fans. That's what I'm saying. Like the premieres, like for your premiere and my premiere. You know, New York City versus the the L.A. premiere. Yeah, they were it's they like, were very similar. Yeah, yeah, like they were very similar in the attendance, and I think that those are truly the best versions of any kind of premiere screener because you get to see the film and in in the the audience, and you get that aura, you get that like ambiance that you know you should experience when watching a movie like that. You know, you're with the you're with the true hardcore fans. And everyone's like reacting the same, and every, it's a good time. Like you say, it's like a rock show. So yeah, the rock concert atmosphere, bro. It feels good. Yeah, it felt it felt really good. And like, you know, like during the fight scenes, like you know, that was when you know you started to, you started to you know hear a lot more you know fan reactions and people like oh and ah and all that kind of stuff. But dude, when surprisingly, when I saw it in IMAX, I didn't hear anybody and i don't think it was due to the fact that yeah it was a it was a significantly louder theater but like come on like when you're in a theater packed full of people you're gonna hear everyone react if everyone's gonna react to something you know right. and 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 there was like it was it was weird like it was strange because i'm like I, in my head i'm like okay this is everyone's first time so i'm not gonna like you know, I'm not going to say lines with the lines and like, I'm not going to ruin it for people like that. Like, I'm just going to stay quiet. I'm right, going to, right, you know, right. all that stuff. Yeah. And then, and then like, there was silence. I was like, dude, what? It's like, it's like everyone was acting like they saw it multiple times. I was like, I don't get it. It was weird, but I don't know. Like, it just goes back to me saying like the first time was the best time, I guess. Like the, that premiere, dude. It was, it was, it was so much fun. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I was a little different. I got to see it with the actors and the staff, and it was, yeah. it was, it was cool though. It was cool because like people, re but it was all the same. Like people react to the same thing. Ultra Instinct, Stardust Breaker got a big reaction. Um, you know, Frieza being funny, the five foot thing, all, all five centimeters, all that stuff was yeah. really, really funny, bro. It, it all worked. Yeah, and I, you know, it's funny. What I thought would have gotten more of a reaction out of people was when was a couple things. Obviously, the little Ultra Instinct tease, right? And then, but more importantly, the Super Saiyan Green, aka potentially, it, the it was it form. was confusing though for some people because we've never seen that before. Oh well, that's the thing. Like you know, you and I have both covered that. Like right. we've had our own separate videos, like detailing what our opinions are and what we what it could be, all that kind of stuff. And you, like when I, I'm telling you, when we when <laughs> when we saw that, and when I say we, I mean like my brother and I, dude. Like he he like grabbed my arm. He's like, "What was that?" 
<laughs> he was like, did you see that? I was yeah, like, well, that's what I'm saying. It was so weird, especially, like, even for f- us who know everything. Like, yeah. we've never seen that before. So it was obviously an artistic choice, but was it a teaser of the future? People keep saying, no, it was artistic license or it was meant to be colorful. It's mm. like, yeah, but they could yeah. always retcon it. Like, that Ultra Instinct scene, how do you know that when Super comes back or in the next movie, there, the Goku's not like, oh, I almost did it against Broly or something. I felt something. Like, and they show a flashback. Like, you don't know that. Like, they could exactly. always... Always easily fit it in. Easily. Exactly. Yeah, and I, 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 to me, to be honest, to add on to that, like I, I personally do not think that it was simply an artistic choice or whatever, because like that's like, that's like completely thinking inside, all the way inside the box. Like I, I don't, I think, it, like, because the fact that they put the time in to make sure that it was noticeable. And that everyone saw it at some point in time. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That and it's is the something. Gray, and it's gray yeah. hair, and it's not even yeah, spiked bro. up. It's it's hair down. Yeah. Come like there's, on. There's dog. no way that they're not gonna they're not gonna revisit that in the future. It's not there's an accident. No way. It, exactly. It's not an accident by any means. Especially when like Goku was doing like during that that power up scene where he was. But you know, this is probably like one of the best screaming scenes that we've ever seen Sean do. I gotta give it to him. Like, well, we should talk about that. So yeah, Sean was great. Vic, Vic was okay. Vic was good. I like his take on like a softer Broly. Yeah. However, when it came to screaming, Japanese I'm, version, Ben Shimada destroyed it, bro. Ben mm-hmm. Shimada, bro. I'm surprised Ben Shimada can still talk. So yeah, that, they're old too. Bro, yeah. Well, yeah, that scene where. Gogeta the Stardust Breaker, and then Broly powers out of it and does that. Yeah. Ben Shimada's version is like, oh my god. Now, you know, Chris Ayers is unbelievable as Frieza. Unbelievable. Oh, I mean, he's just, what a talent that guy is. Veronica Taylor was really fun as Barry Blue, sounded like a Sailor Moon villain, even though she wasn't Sailor Moon. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, Erica Lindbeck was adorable as uh, as Sheilai. I thought she was fantastic. Yeah, uh, she did great. No, she was great. And then Monica was hilarious as Bulma. I think it's uh, it's great. It's yeah, great. it was a fun. It was a fun, a fun cast. They did a really good job. But I wish I saw the sub. I have not seen the sub yet. Um, and I'm when probably you, when gonna... you see it, you'll love yeah. Broly. Broly's insane in the sub, bro. The screaming. Yeah. I'm and of course, Horikawa was freaking amazing in the sub too, bro. Like Horikawa was just like, what a great. They're all great, bro. I, I'm not a fly. I, I oh, 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 he's he's. Fun. He is. <laughs> I amazing. can't wait. I really can't wait to see it. Um, oh man, but yeah, like, like that scene where, where, where Goku's powering up, right? And and he, there's a clear line of green aura around him while he's in god form and and, and it's um dark green and it was before it was the when goku was doing it was like a darker green like darker than broly is one to say that yeah like dude like come on this is another thing that i will add is that that people forget these guys are saiyans and they and and, and quite literally the term monkey see monkey do is apparent completely apparent in Dragon Ball. Like, how many times in the past have we seen well, any I mean, of Well, I mean, the them? original Kamehameha, Goku saw it and then did right. it. Right, exactly. You know, and, and not just that, but also Majin Buu learned it by seeing it once. And, you know, the Kamehameha seems to be an easy move to learn. Yeah, but, like, I mean, not even to just say with Goku, but, like, Saiyans in general. Like, you know, the Destructo Disc, the Solar Flare, Gotenks learning Super Saiyan 3... You know, like that kind of stuff, and and you know, it's like they are they they're they're a race that can learn how to do things super quick. And then Broly, middle of the fight, being trapped in uh, I forget that one the the one what it was called, but when when Goku had him in like paralyzed. The uh, yeah, he, it's called the God Bind according to Dokkan. Okay, so the God the God Bind, and then Broly legit. Did the God Bind to, to right reverse back it. To on, him, yeah. Right it's back that, to it's him, yeah. It's that Broly doesn't have God Key, so I guess it's the Broly Bind? I don't know. Or, you, don't or, need, you don't need God Key to compete with these dudes, bro. You not don't. Broly. Not Broly. Not Broly. Of course not. Hell so, no. I mean, like, this is, so again, like, all the, 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 the tease of the green stuff, you know, the, the, the tease of, you know, that might potentially end up being, like, the quote-unquote true form of a Super Saiyan. 
dude. That's don't the be theory surprised. that Kendamu said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like don't be surprised if it comes back later on. And I wouldn't. I I would be actually pretty hyped to see that. You know, green would actually have its own standout thing, and it kind of does make. Well, sense it does. I mean, we've got day. kale. Remember the stuff that Vegeta said about kale? How? Yeah, man. Yeah, this has already been teased before. How Vegeta said that about kale, and you know we. We haven't even seen the co- the connection between Broly and Kale. Yeah, I think they're saving that for the movie. I think, th- or I'm sorry, for the TV series or whatever, the ne- or the next movie. I think Broly will meet Kale. I think something's gonna happen with that. And I and that's another. I'm glad you brought that up because that was actually something that I wanted to to tie in with July because like I know right now it's like everyone and their mothers is really shipping July and Broly and respectively so, like rightfully so. Like yes, it makes the most sense because. They're obviously going to be spending a lot of time together. Come on, bro. What's he, is he going to screw Lemo? No, he's going to hit her. No, bro. of course not. Lemo, the poor, the poor guy, is going to be third wheel the entire time. Whatever. Yeah, if it happens, like, it happens. Hey, Lemo, can you leave the room for about 15 minutes? All right. <laughs> like, come on, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But then, but then you go. Though he's got 45 years of pent up freaking sexual frustration, dog. Like, he probably doesn't even know what that is. He's, maybe that's why he's so mad. <laughs> Maybe that's you know what I'm saying. Maybe his, he doesn't have blue balls. He has green balls. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Maybe that's why he's so mad, bro. Because he's 43. He's never been laid, and then Chila is gonna fucking suck it out of him, and oh, then he's gonna end no. up fighting Goku and being a wussy because women make men women make men weak, bro. Like in Rocky. Oh my god. <sighs> I have no words. <laughs> I have no words. You know I ain't lying about that one, bro. All right, well, uh, like I'm trying to say, I think that mixing in Kale to the whole mix, I think that it's going to be weird because, like, I feel like they would relate more, which would makes, make their relationship make more sense because they're similar. They have, like, an uncontrollable, overflowing power within them that you know, is very hard to, I guess, master and attain, but Kale has already shown us that it can be done. And I feel like if there was, to, if there, if there is to ever be an arc where, you know, it's a universe six, universe seven kind of crossover, or if it's just the Saiyans from both universes that meet up or do something together, that it would, it would be Kale. Like, I feel like Goku might start, you know, he'll, 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 he'll start to train him and like, you know, get his foot in the door with how, you know, to controlling his stuff. But I think, like, it's got to be Kale that really, you know, is the one that helps him understand that. But at the same time, I guess now that I'm, you know, now that I'm saying all this, if the if we're going to go with what's going on in the dub, because aren't they writing Kale and Cauliflower, like, as, like, a like a couple? It, it, it's like they, they were hinting at it in the Japanese version, but I feel like in the dub they're kind of making it more... Of a thing. Okay, so then I yeah, I I don't know how far they're gonna go with it though. We'll see. I get yeah. So then I guess at that point, yeah, I I guess I guess Broly is pretty set off with July, and then you know, but but it it is gonna be a weird. There's gonna be. I'm telling you, if it does happen, there's gonna be a weird like iffy like oh, but what if type of they're gonna they're gonna cross eye like look Broly and Kale are gonna lock eyes. They're gonna see each other. They're gonna be powered up. And all that, and then well, then we'll see what happens from that point on. Like we'll we'll see because I don't know. I, every, that's the original ship. Everyone's been 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 putting you know Broly and Kale together in all the fan art and all that kind of stuff before yeah, but, July. But, uh, bro, can you imagine Broly and Kale, bro, having a night together, bro? That planet will blow up, bro. The whole planet <laughs> planet Sadala will implode, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine how loud that would be, bro, with the screaming that they do? I and both I, their I, eyes are gonna be white, bro, during the climax. Come oh, on, that's what I'm saying, bro. It's gotta. This is a very sexual podcast. It's gotta be Broly and Chilai, bro. Chilai this is your fault. Them, and you know, Chilai's gonna be on top, bro, because Broly's way too big to be on top, bro. bro. I'm so. I mean, done. you saw Broly and Gogeta. Broly's like, bro. When Broly goes full power, he's like 15 feet tall, dude. Like he's gigantic. But wait, can we talk about that? They broke dimensions. What is yes, that all about? They cracked bro. the dimensional fabric. Some people. Were theorizing they went to hits pocket dimension. They didn't say that in the movie, but that's mm. kind of a cool theory. I, I can go with that theory. I mean, 
was it though? Because I was I was thinking more along the lines like, okay, this is Gogeta, father of Gotenks. We've seen Gotenks do something with dimensions and stuff before. I feel like this yes. is kind of related to that. And this time they that. just cracked it with one key blast. They didn't even have to scream. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's what I thought it was. I I feel like one like by the second when I saw it the second time, like the first time around, I was so confused. I was like, okay, maybe it's just that they were fighting so fast that they were just in another like pocket dimension or something but then when i saw it again and i and i made the connection that oh we've kind of seen this similar before like gotenks you know he made a freaking wormhole dimension just to escape the hyperbolic time chamber and and that you know i feel like it was relating to that uh, yeah anyway. absolutely we've seen the teases of it in the boo arc and uh mm -hmm. then we saw the the goku and beerus fight where they almost cracked the entire universe so it's yep. not like they did that here you know and yeah that, that exactly. was a great scene yeah, dude, like, it was so cool. Like, I, it was something that I was not expecting. Like, like that. Just I shows was you... because they they spoiled that in one of the interviews, dude. One of the oh, art they guys, did. One of the art oh. guys spoiled like, oh, they're gonna find another dimension. I remember that. Like, I did a video on it. Oh, uh, see, thankfully that was one that was one that I didn't see because normally I do keep up with your stuff, but I I was very I was very careful around that season. And you were and and to your and to your credit, you were very. You were very, you were a good sport when it came down to making sure that I did not see no spoilers. <laughs> no, absolutely, and and not just that, but um, the when you think about the words like okay, Broly and Goku fight in another dimension, you would think that could mean like a, a metaphor for like a higher dimension of power. No, they yeah. literally went to another dimension. You know, whatever <laughs> they literally cracked the dimensional fabric. I thought it was it, awesome. In the middle of the fight, like it was like one one clash is all it took after all I of the, the back it, and bro. forth. Yeah, and I thought it was funny when Gogeta was like, what the... <laughs> and they just, they just kept fighting. Because at that point, like, Broly just went, like, full Super Saiyan. Like, oh, my God, it was crazy. I loved it. The movie was so much fun to watch. And similar to what you said, like, every time I saw it after the first time, it was just, like a new experience and I, I i was cheesy i'm not gonna lie i was cheesing the entire like during like when start, stuff was starting to get real and like things started falling into place again i was just like oh man like i'm just so happy to be here right now like this is great like can't even believe this is still happening like i am seeing a broly film and this is a akira toriyama's broly so super super freaking happy about that but, no, and, and I think Toriyama did enough to pay tribute to the old Broly while creating a brand new character. Yeah. Yes. And Paragus uh, was even was even better uh, in this movie. He, you know, they all were. They all were better, really. So about, about Paragus, what was your initial reaction when when Frieza did what he did to Paragus and to to trigger Broly's Super Saiyan form? I mean, the whole theater, again, I knew it was going to happen ahead of time. All the, oh, you uh, did? The movie was spoiled, like, months ahead of time, and I had to uh. cover it because it's my job. But um, I was skeptical of how the scene was till I actually saw it play out. Like, I, I knew it was going to happen, but I didn't know it was, I was going to like it, and it was funny. But, of course, that begs the question, Coochie, since you insist on me calling you that because you get so much of it. Oh, my God. That begs the question. <laughs> Now that Broly, because I assume that Sheilai, during one of their many lovemaking sessions, is going to tell Broly, because <laughs> Broly's going to say, how do we get to Vampa? I can't well, stay. I, I use these uh, wish-granting orbs to teleport you to Vampa. And then Broly's going to say, really, can we bring my dad back to life? I mean, that seems to be a logical motivation for Broly. So you think? So you think that at some he point... He loves time, his dad. I mean, it wouldn't make sense, right? He was mad when his dad was killed. You know that's true. That is, I, I that's the one thing I failed to even think about because I thought of so many scenarios and because that's actually our that's a good segue. Our next our next topic is you know where do we go from here? Like what happens next? I think that that would actually be a pretty interesting thing um, to to you know to to see happen if they actually do bring Paragus back. But I feel like if they do. I feel like a lot of the fandom is going to be like, okay, well, if they're going to bring Paragus, let's bring back Bardock. Let's bring back King Vegeta while we're at it. Like, let's just bring Napa back the trio. Napa and Raditz had cameos. And, again, I knew all this. I just avoided your uh, – I just avoided all – I didn't tell you, but I knew all that stuff. It was all. It, they revealed all this stuff in the interviews. It wasn't even a spoiler. They actually revealed it. You know, It wasn't even like, like a secret. 
Yeah, well, no, um, I that was promotional stuff. So I did see the Napa and the Raditz that they were going to be included in the film. Like that was that was like I feel like that was like scanned stuff. Like from yeah, you know, no, you're right. But that's what I'm saying. You could have avoided that too, you know, and you you, you didn't, but you could have, you know. Well, yeah, like any my my rule of thumb oh. was if it was promotional. I it was okay. It was fair ground. Okay, though, th- then you should have seen the the, the the interview with the alternate dimension thing because that was also promotional. Oh, see, I missed that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's happened. a lot of stuff they revealed, dude. They pretty much revealed not the entire thing, but they revealed a lot of the movie ahead of time. They really th- did. I, that's something that I'm I'm gonna have to say that for a few for the future, you know, if they do another film, which I'm sure they will at some point. Yeah, it's inevitable. Do you know how much I, money this is making? Oh yeah, dude. Oh dude, I I've been saying on Twitter, hey, at this rate, they're gonna make a second coming. <laughs> I actually Broly. wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Put Broly yeah. back on the big screen. Yes, please, because it'll it'll because that's the thing. My man got green. He makes them green. It, it, it's a full circle. It's all that's Broly all, that's what it is. versus Jiren. That's the next big money fight. They want to keep this thing going. That's the next. All right. That because if, if we're booking this like wrestling, yes. right? We saw Broly yeah. and Gogeta. Broly, Broly and Jiren, and Broly and Beerus are the next two big main events. If you ask me, that's my opinion. Yeah, right? no, you're that absolutely right. That draws money, bro. That sells tickets. Because that's actually. Uh, one of the most talked about it's a debate, yeah, debates, yeah, like since the, the 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 news that Broly was gonna be like even before we saw anything remotely informational outside of the like the very first trailer, you know, everyone was like, okay, Broly Jiren, book it, like who who would win? And it's like, dude, like I see I see people asking you, and you're like you're like guys, like. We haven't even seen the guy fight. <laughs> like we don't know what he can do, you know. So it's it's one of those things. But that that would be that would be really good. But what I was gonna say was, I really hope that they go with a different approach with you know promoting the film and not revealing too much because I feel like especially nowadays with movies. The trailers and you know things that they might well Japan in just interviews. doesn't care man I know and and that I think that uh like like I saw this funny tweet right and it was um I forget who tweeted it but I know that rhyme style uh retweeted it that's how I saw it that it is like imagine me no 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 it wasn't it wasn't it was like it was like imagine if you were someone that avoided all kinds of spoilers and you knew nothing about the movie going into seeing it on the day of release, right. and then they hand you that that Gogeta. Card. Oh right! Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. <laughs> oh, like I, I like because I I put myself in that person's shoes when I read that. I was like, oh my! I would literally like, because I can only imagine how I would have reacted. If I did not know, if no one knew Gogeta was actually going to be... Because, look, I put two and two together, and I saw all of the hints leading up towards this movie. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure Bardock's going to make it into this film in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's a well, flashback it was or in trailer two, though. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, like, before there was even a trailer. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, flashback stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm saying, it's like, just, Bardock... It's, you're, you're thinking fan service. Well, I'm thinking not even that. I'm thinking like they made an announcement that they were having Bardock and the Fusion Reborn. Films. That's right, and 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 movie and movie A twelve and yeah. Bardock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, and I Gogeta, was like, Gogeta clue. Yup, right? exactly. I was like, why would they pick these movies out of all the movies to get us ready to see what's coming in this Broly film? Like they I, made it obvious. I, yeah, but and, and, you know, you're right, and I was skeptical of that, but it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like no one, no one, no one really paid too much attention to that, and I was like, guys. Like this is this is happening. Like it was like everyone was too busy trying to like uh, prevent themselves from seeing the the Xenoverse leaks, saying like oh Gogeta, Gogeta, Gogeta. I was like guys, I'm not even I'm not even leaking the Xenoverse stuff. I'm I'm literally I'm I'm using context clues here, like common sense. Like they're gonna show a movie with Bar- like our special with Bardock, and they're gonna show us a whole film that leads up to a fight that features Gogeta towards the end, like. There's no way that Gogeta and Bardock are not gonna have some kind of role in this film. Like, there's there's no way. Like, they they don't just do things like that just to do them. Like, that's not how it works. Like, well, just uh, yeah, I agree. And I was happy because the Bardock was the first time. Even though I don't like that dub because that dub was absolutely terrible. Bardock 
was the first time we saw the remastered version of the Bardock special. And it actually yep. aired in Japan on on uh, on Animax. For the first time ever, the Bardock special aired remastered the right way with the with by Toei. Yeah. And, oh my god, like oh my it's, looked great, right? Oh dude, it's like it was it was like it was animated yesterday. Yeah. Like it's incredible yeah. the what the stuff they did do with, with the remasters. It's just that the, you know, I mean, the movies have been out for a while on, on Japanese Netflix. The Blu-rays are freaking censored, which really pissed me off and a lot of other fans. But I really mm-hmm. want that full Dragon Ball remastered. I don't even care too much about Z, even though I do. I want Dragon Ball from 1986 remastered, like, cleaned up. Because, I mean, it's already good, but, I mean, I want it like that. I Yeah, dude, I can agree. I totally – I would love to just start – that's what I'm kind of waiting for. I'm waiting for them to like really give us these amazing remastered Blu-ray sets, right. so that way you know I can just have some solid. Because the only things that I have right now are like the orange bricks, and that's oh, that's the, terrible. They're the worst. That's the worst possible way to get it, bro. Uh, yes, and 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 yeah, I know that. And I and of course I find this out like way after the fact after I own and all it's nine. It's not your fault. Yeah, well actually yeah. you can get some good deals on the Blu-rays now if you want the the Funimation Blu-rays. But I mm-hmm. agree. If I were you, I would probably wait. To see about the Z and, and Dragon Ball like regular, you know what I'm talking about? I would wait. Yeah, it's yeah. smart. Save your money. Save your money because yeah. I think because let me tell you something right now, it ain't cheap. <laughs> oh no, trust me, I know because like that's dude, that's like that's like pretty much all the whole reason why I haven't even dipped into trying to get the Dragon Boxes, which is something that I've always wanted. No, but... hold off, hold. These are gonna yep. replace those unless they're censored. Then forget it. <laughs> but before yeah. you buy them, we'll know if they're censored. We'll all know because if yeah. they are, I'm not buying them. I don't want the censor crap. Yeah, but but yeah, dude, like that's, you know, those were all the hints leading into this movie and, you know, I I think that Did did you think the Gogeta Broly fight was too hard to watch? Cuz I think it was at times. So, yeah, like a little it was a little bit. Like it was it was definitely a little hard to follow at first because like like you warned me ahead of time. You're like, dude, before you go see this John, like you're gonna literally like have to go see it instantly again because it it's the the action is it's too much very fast yeah 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 i uh it, i had i'll tell you this i had a fun enjoyable time trying to follow it cuz i was just like you know i i felt like a little kid like watching something that i love so much like for the first time like i was like my eyes were like wide open like like jaw drop like smiling dude i was like oh my god like this is the best thing ever like it was so it was so cool like it, it was so cool to see and i see it again and i see it again after that i'm i don't even know like i can't even it sucks because i, I want to go see it again but i i can't like i gotta i gotta you know i gotta save up for Kamehameha. <laughs> Con. <laughs> right well uh no I, I feel you on that i mean it's you're good you might end up seeing it again i mean it'll they're already taking pre-orders for Blu-rays, so that'll be out April, May. But it's not going to be the same as seeing in the theater, bro. That that experience is great, no. especially with the other fans. It really is. Yeah. That yeah. first time, like you know, because you're I'm watching people who never who never knew the spoilers, so you don't know, freeze a killing Paragus and just you know that was a shocker to a lot of people. And then Broly, Vegeta winning a fight. Vegeta did not go down. He won that fight. He beat Broly in that movie a He's, couple times too. At that, he, he beat him. Yeah, he beat him. I mean. It, Vegeta did not get thrashed in this film like we thought yeah. he would at all. Yeah, matter of fact, Goku was the one that actually got thrashed. I know. I love that. I love that. That Vegeta came off relatively unscathed in this movie, which is a, a nice flip of things. Yeah, dude. And then uh, what's when it he, called? When I, he became God, it got a huge reaction in the movie theater too, bro. Oh, and with that yeah. that fire. Like, yes. 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 Man, that, that, that part... Yeah, that was the that was one of the parts that people that was one of the uh, parts where people started clapping because yes. that was the first time we were seeing you know Super Saiyan God Vegeta and the way the, the fire anime. like enveloped him and then he did the God Big Bang attack oh it was great dude so so you so you're calling it the God Big Bang it's Those just eight- the name that I came up with that's not the real name I don't know what yeah. that's called I look cool though. It was like it was like air bubble. Big no, 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 no. It was air bubbles at first, but remember, he went for the key blast at the end when he tried to kill him. Remember? Oh, that's even right. Even Goku that's... was like, "No, oh, you're gonna kill yeah, him." Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That would have killed him, bro. Yeah, pr- yeah, yeah. Well, well, would it though? Because uh, that's well, that's I mean, thing. if Broly didn't power up, it would have. You know what I mean? Yeah, because like, the, so another scenario, really quick, uh, before we move on, um, that I wanted to talk to you about. Was that so? The wish that Chilai made. She goes, save Broly and send him back 
to the planet he grew up on, right? Yeah. yeah. So by the by the context of save him, right? Is was this at the fact that he was about to get a big ass Kamehameha wave blown in his face, or did it mean to save him from himself? Because remember, his power was overflowing. Like he kept getting stronger and stronger, and he just kept getting bigger and bigger. Could that have been an alternate meaning in in that? you know, save him from himself because his power just would, you know, would have kept just growing so much that he would have just blown up? I didn't even think of that, but what would what might take that away is the fact that the Spanish dub did not, I don't believe she said save him in the Spanish, the way she said just teleport him to his home planet of Vampa. So it might be okay. that the dub may have added the save him for lip flap purposes. Um, okay. I don't remember. Uh, I didn't even think of that, though. But one thing I will tell you, and I've talked about this in the past in my Easter egg video, is... That mm -hmm. Kamehameha was meant to kill Broly, and if you look at the, I said this before in the Easter egg video, but if you look at Broly's eyes, right before the Kamehameha hit, his eyes yes. went back to normal. It wasn't yes. white, so he may have been powering down, in which case maybe Chi Lai's wish did work, or maybe Broly, and I, I think it's actually what I'm about to tell you, I think Gogeta had him beat. I think when Gogeta did that move where he launched him in, remember he had him in midair and then shot that blast up? I think that was it. I think Broly was done. Because even Weiss was like, this battle's about to be over. Like, oh, that dude, was that, it. That was the reverse it. galactic donut. Shout outs to his son because he had this. Is that same... what is that what you're calling? It's like a different dude, Well, I guess the hand movements are similar. That's what it that's what that's what I That's a get, brand new yeah. move though. It's yes, brand new move. It's not it's not by any means galactic donut at all, because of course galactic donut is a is, is a freaking ring. But what the hand motions reminded me yeah, of that in yeah, reverse. Yeah, 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 in reverse. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a great point. No, and, and uh, I think that the Kamehameha would have killed him, especially when he was powering down. It was almost like when I've compared this to it before, on Namek when Goku and Frieza are fighting, mm -hmm. and there's a scene where Goku hits Frieza in the, um, in the gut with a huge uppercut, and then Frieza starts puking up blood, and then yeah. Goku says, this fight's over. So at that point, Goku could sense that Frieza's body was breaking down. And what ends up happening is Frieza still wants to keep fighting and winds up, because he's so tired, he jumps up and gets sliced in half by his own freaking disc. So it's like Goku yes. could have... If, if Frieza had just shut up and just said, fine, my body's done, I'm, I'm done... Maybe he could have lived to fight another day, but instead he got sliced in half. So same thing here. I think Gogeta's punches to Broly's stomach, you know, because we're talking about like realistic fighting here. When mm -hmm. you get hit in the body, it hurts a lot more than getting hit in the face, especially for a longer period of time. So I think Gogeta targeted the body on purpose to wear him down and then did that big move. I think Gogeta blew at the end when he took the fight seriously. It was too much for Broly. But had Broly continued to train... It might have been a different story because he hung in there for quite some time with Gogeta Blue. He hung in there for quite some time. And, yeah, dude, and like like you've been saying in your videos and what I've been saying, you know, in all of mine. That, he got put like, over, bro. Yeah, like Broly ha has all of the potential, especially with training and proper guidance. Like, I think that he really has, you know, has the, the, the lineup for being, the like, the strongest character in the entire show, like potentially, it's crazy because it was a meme for so long. How Broly fans would say he's the strongest, even though he never was at all. Mm -hmm. But now it's possible he could be. But again, it's a different Broly. I, I never like comparing old Broly to new Broly. It's like they're they're so different. It's not even fair to be honest because the old Broly is so flawed. It's and so he's also flawed. sadistic too. He's more evil. This Broly's like a lovable guy you want to hang out with and like you know. Yeah, you know, dude, totally he's like Tarzan. Guy. He's like Tarzan when he's in base form. Right? Yeah, it's weird, man. Yeah, like one of my favorite parts of again also was you know when he actually told the story of him and Ba, the monster that uh, he used to train with on Vamp. I ain't gonna say who, but I know a YouTuber who cried during that scene. Not yo, me. It was not me. That's damn. That's actually. I mean, like no, that that's awesome. It like, was very touching. Yeah, it was. A, it was a really cool scene. And that was all. Oh, I'm glad we were talking about it now because I almost forgot to bring it up earlier. But that would be cool if there's a scene um, that was cut or whatever that was, or it, at least it was written in, in Toriyama's three hour script where they're on, they're back on Vampa and Broly finds Ba. That'd because be they great. didn't, that would be that great. they didn't say Paragus killed him. They no, just said yeah, that Ba is not dead. Yeah, he's alive somewhere, yeah. maybe. 
Yeah, he just he said that he shot him in the ear, and then after that, he was never the same again. And that's it. They didn't say people. May, some people assume that he they, he died, but no. Maybe he died of old age. That was a long time ago. But you're right. Like we don't know how long those animals live. So right. No, you're right. And one thing I did I do want to tell you is um as far as deleted scenes go in Toriyama's script, I do believe, and I said this before, I do believe that there probably was a scene where Broly turned Great Ape in the actual movie instead of it being a flashback, and I think that was cut. I think that whole Great Ape stuff with Broly was supposed to be in the movie, and it was cut, dude. Oh, yes. Yeah, you know how yeah, Paragus finds him and his, his armor's been stretched? I feel like there was a whole scene with that, and they didn't show it because there was there's dude, probably no point in showing it. There, you know what? You're probably right, and that is another reason why I really hope that they do start the anime off with Broly because again, that's the I only think, reason to be honest with you. Yo, there, I mean, there's plenty, but like that, realistically, yes. Like just to see Great Ape again in the anime would be amazing. It would be a nice treat, and to see a Broly Great Ape of all things, like that, that would be amazing. Now, the last thing. I wanna, I wanna definitely pick your brain about, it. cause I know you, you talked about this a little bit with Kendamu, on, on your recent video, about, uh, with the, with the Super Saiyan Green stuff, right? Now, this is something that I have not seen or heard anyone even say before, and I think that this is, you know, this is, this might be a stretch, but again, this is, you know, thinking outside the box, and I feel like this is actually a good, a good, uh. Um, a good place to, to, to discuss this really quick. And it is that Paragus cut his tail off, right? So he could not turn into the great ape form anymore because, you know, it was too much of a risk. He could kill everybody. He could destroy the planet, blah, blah, blah. You know, all that, you know, stuff that makes a lot of sense. Now, when he powered up his first transformation in the movie, Paragus says... He believes that Broly tapped into his great ape like form while maintaining his human form. So this is where we call Broly like, you know, Ozaru form, bro, whatever. Like doesn't matter. You could call him Great Saiyan, Great Ape Saiyan, whatever name you want to attach to it just to kind of identify it, fine. But at the same time, you guys also mentioned that like you guys you guys talked a little bit about Super Saiyan 4. And that's another thing that I wanted to elaborate further. A lot of people beyond. have talked about have talked about that lately, and it's a theory, but it's not confirmed at all that the Broly Uzaru uh, containment power or whatever is supposed to be like uh, a tribute to SS4. It could be. It could be. Yeah, I don't. I want to hear Toriyama say it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah yeah yeah. I don't. I don't think it's necessarily a tribute. But what I am saying is that I really think that this is actually po quite possibly the the preemptive the 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 um like yeah like the preemptive forms leading into a Super Saiyan four because I would um I would like to imagine you mean like a rewrite of SS four I mean I would I would like it to be something from Universe six you know oh so like you're saying like, like something I, that I, like, like I think it would be cool if like Universe seven had like all the Super Saiyan like God forms then six had like the fours uh, but you couldn't call it ss4 you have to give it a different name yeah that's true yeah but like i'm i'm just trying to think to myself because it's like i'm thinking of the times when like you know vachita and goku were powered up and we both see we, we see the 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 hint of the green you know um aura in the movie, and yeah. yeah in the movie right yeah, yeah and yeah. then it's like we we see broly and all he is is green aura he literally he didn't he didn't have any yellow until he actually went super saiyan and even then like, it was still green yeah, and it was still green at that point. So I'm just thinking, like, well, if they if if they were to like if, like imitate this and try to replicate this, you know, seeing like you know how Broly's been doing it or whatever, I feel like there's a possible chance that Goku and Vegeta might even be able to tap into that as well, possibly. Well, I I I, I think you're right, but I don't want that because I want Boy to have his own forms. You know yeah, what I mean? I, yeah, every yeah, like re in yeah, re especially recently, like it, it, with a lot of the characters, like not even just them, but like Gohan too, they all are trying to attain their own like path paths of like power and stuff, <clears throat> and you know, like so that way they have like their own found strength, and you know, everything's not the same. I feel like it would be dope, but what I what ultimately what I'm trying to say is that like 
the thought of, you know, like imagine like like they they can tap into the great ape within them without their tails. But what if the possibility of if you really pushed and pushed, like what if you just turned into one? And like no no one has thought of that because we've only we've only been taught the lore and we've been it's been told to us in this way where like if you have a, if you have a tail you look at the full moon you turn into a great ape but then what happens when you have a guy like Broly who's just pushing and pushing and pushing to the point where it's just like dude like who knows he figures something out nobody else can figure out right? yeah like that's what I'm saying like we've never that's something that we've never thought of similar to how when they reintroduced the Patara fusion, no one knew that there was an hour time limit. That's because they of didn't. Retcon. Yeah, I, but but just thinking as it like thinking about it, you know, on a timeline stance, like for years, we all thought that oh, it was something that had to do with the the molecular structure, the the what was going on in Boo's body that 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 split them apart. Yeah, in the manga, they said it was uh, the air. But yeah, the, the, it was that. Yeah, they wreck. Oh, I, I'm okay with that explanation, though. Yeah, yeah. Like that was cool, or whatever. But then to hear like, oh, if you're human, it's an hour li- time limit rather than That's half right. an hour. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. like that kind of thing is cool. So like, it would be cool to see later on. That in the pissed future. off a lot of Vegito fans, by the way. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they it did, were but... not happy with that, bro. Yeah, but then, then again, it's just like one way or another, you know that they they were not gonna stay. Vegito for you know no no you know I thought they would they could use Super Dragon Balls to defuse oh yeah I guess I guess that's you can do or, anything with the Super Dragon Balls yeah true but but yeah I mean so I guess to 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 go into this next part and then the final part here what do you what do you think could happen next do you think that they might they might uh have to call up Broly to face Moro at some point I, I don't know about Moro but I think at some point they are gonna need Broly I actually think at some point and I hope it's not soon I don't want it to be soon yeah we're too gonna soon, have yeah. we're gonna have another tournament of power and Broly will be on team universe seven this time I think that will happen in the future like with all the universes but that they gotta hold that off until way later I don't want to see that anytime soon I would like to see that once they pass the freaking world yeah, tournament yeah 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 and i agree comes with that in because everyone's waiting they already name dropped oob in super so everyone immediately thought that oh that's the next part but then nope we got we had to go through the tournament power we had to go through broly and now we're now going we through now we have the mortal stuff yeah yeah the mortal stuff so it's like we can only hope that after this it's finally going towards that so that way cuz i i just want them to close that gap so that way we can we can enter brand new, new territory stuff. yeah you know? i agree with you yeah we don't know who's going to die we don't know what's going to happen yeah like you know pick a part like take thing take the good things from gt if anything and then just keep let it all be its own officially be its own alternate timeline universe whatever you want to call it let it be its own thing so that way super just kind of like you know retcons it overwrites it whatever and that way all of that you know discussion can just be put to rest finally (laughs) i agree i agree i want them to and then we're gonna have like we can then finally retire the old characters i said it before and i and i feel that this is true the tournament of power to me was the was terry funk's fucking Final retirement. This to me was the <laughs> final time we're gonna see Tenshin Han, Roshi, um, some of these older characters, Krillin, maybe even Gohan. Don't hate me, but maybe Gohan and Piccolo. This is the last time we're ever gonna see him fight, and we're gonna move on to new characters. That's the way I always saw that. Like this is like their last big hurrah. You know what I mean? Like the legends, right. and then that's it. We're gonna move on, and I would be fine with that. I don't want any more of like. Retire the old characters, bring in new ones. I don't want any more like, uh, you know. I mean, unless you do a tournament of power, I mean, you can do that. But I mean, I, I want you're you're right. Move past the end of Z and give me some stuff that I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, like you know, I, I I'm looking forward to seeing you know an older Goten and older Trunks. You know, Pan, of course, Oob, you know, Broly at this point in time, obviously, you know, what if, you know, he does actually have children with Shalai and all Hell that kind yeah, of stuff. Hell yeah, bro. I made a joke earlier, but I wasn't even joking, bro. Trunks and Mai, <laughs> they have a yes. kid in the future. Oob and then Broly and Shilai's kid. That's the next generation right there, bro. So you think that Oob is going to end up with, with Broly and Shilai's kid? Um... I think 
that would be a good little kind of rivalry. I don't, I don't see why not. A rivalry? Okay, yeah, a rivalry. Or, or, and then they have to work together for whatever I reason. Thought, I thought you meant, like, they end up together, like, in a no, relationship. Oh, I mean, they... No, I meant just they're gonna... Okay, okay, They're gonna okay, be okay. rivals and maybe friends, you know what I mean, as time goes by. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I was also thinking about this, too. Um, I, I, really, I really think that uh, at some point, you know, like, because no one wants to see... You know, Kid Goku again. That's the that's a mistake. I hope they learned from, and they're not gonna make Goku. They're not gonna wish him into being a kid again. I really hope not. And if anything, I hope it's just a joke and it's for one episode, so that they get all the ha ha's out of the way and they'd be like, ha, it thought it like fooled you. We're not really doing this because I, I feel like that would be a really cool uproar at first. Like, oh my god, guys, look, Goku's a kid again. We're doing GT all over. But nah, it, 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 it would be hilarious if they did that and then yeah. Goku wakes up from a dream and he's like oh i i had a terrible dream <laughs> that would be the best bro see dragon ball needs stuff like that it needs a, a few meta jokes here and there like broly goku telling broly call me kakarot was totally meta do it oh, a little bit more bro because that was that was total meta shit bro I, yeah, I, that, I totally – I can't believe I forgot to even mention that part. The best line of the film was the very last line yep. was when Goku made sure that, you know, like he had the right to call him Kakarot because obviously at this point now that's the next thing. That we, one of the next things we can look forward to is when – they are fighting and training, and and he's trying to control his his power. And he, oh my god, I can't wait! Ah, oh, I can't wait! I don't know be... if he's gonna say it as much as old Broly, but I can see him saying it once in a while, like during during their actual fight. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, even yeah, if yeah. it is one time, yeah, if, yeah. As long as long as it happens, dude, that's all that matters. Kakaroto. Yes. Like in the Japanese yes. Because Ben Shimon is amazing. Yeah, but but yo, but to but yeah, so to to finish up my last thought about like the future of all these characters and what could happen, you know, like I said, take the good from GT and like you know do away with the rest, is that I wouldn't be opposed to. I mean, it, it would be a it would be a really big pill to swallow from a lot of the fans for them to uh, like officially retire like Goku and Vegeta and all that kind of stuff, but. Who's to say that, you know, you have future generations, kind of like the movie, the GT Generations movie, where, you know, it was like Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. Like, imagine if, like, we get so far into the story of Dragon Ball that, you know, they would essentially have to do something like that. But I, at the same time, I really don't think so, because look at all the stuff that they've, they've been doing in Super, and this is within a 10-year time gap. So I really don't think we have anything to worry about, especially with, you know, how they're going to be writing stuff. Well, I think eventually, and I hate to say it, but eventually Nozawa will pass away because she's old, and they're mm -hmm. going to have to move past Goku. They could still tell stories in this world, but they would have to move past Goku. It maybe change the name of the show or something, but... At, at some point, it's going to happen. You know, I don't know if they'll recast. Maybe they will, but they're going to have yeah. to, I think, move past Goku later at some point. Yeah, at some point, they're going to have to come to that. You know, um, it's, it's like in wrestling, bro. Everybody gets old. They couldn't stick yeah. with freaking Hulk Hogan forever. Bruno San yeah. Martino, any of these guys. Yeah, I mean, well, thankfully, it's like, you know, the likes of the Saiyans, at least, they're going to retain their youthful look. And, like, we won't, we won't see them, like... You know, we won't see them. Yeah, aging but for the like actors really that but the actors that play them are aging. That's the issue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, granted, like Sean Schemmel and you know Chris, they, they I feel I mean they they they're pretty good looking dudes for their age. So I think they'll be all right for pause. another like Huge 10, 15 on that years, one, bro. Huge. Pause. Oh come on, pause dude, police. I... Forgive him, pause police. Oh, I pause police. Well, but Sean, you know what I'm Sean saying. Sean is fifty. Uh, and Sabbath's in his 40s, so I mean, they could. I mean, I'm not saying they can't play the role, but I mean, Dragon Ball could go on forever, bro. We might get a reboot of the series in 50 years again, bro. You, you never know, dude. I'm. I it's said literature. it. I, I said it on Twitter. I said that the way the way things are looking, Dragon Ball could end up being the next One Piece as far as how long it's gonna be. Well, I meant. I mean, that's part of it too, but I meant more so the fact that I think at some point, and it's not going to happen anytime soon, but I think in maybe forty or fifty years, they're going to retell the manga, like start over. You know what I mean? Because you know how many shows, Sailor Moon, Crystal, Gundam, you know, they're going to actually redo the entire manga, start to finish with a brand new cast, brand new animation team in like fifty years. 
You know I'm saying dude, like a reboot. That, yeah, that'd be awesome. It's and gonna I've happen actually, eventually, bro. I'm pretty sure of it. I I've said this. Uh, I said I yeah. I definitely said it on Twitter where I I felt like they are possibly teasing at like when it, when they were showing all of the 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 Dragon Ball minus stuff and and emphasizing on a lot of the stuff with you know that whole backstory. I was like, you know what? I wonder if they're gonna have like they're gonna just reboot Dragon Ball and they're just gonna write in with like they're they're gonna write the story with all of this stuff, you know, with with the 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 story the origin story of the Saiyans and all that kind of stuff and a bunch of other things that they might want to add in there, and then at that point tell the story from that point forward. So it kind of feels like old school tsunami days where it's like I tune in and I see Dragon Ball and then I see Dragon Ball Z like right after and it's like. We right now have Dragon Ball Super, and then, like, we'll get, at the same time, like, just Dragon Ball. Like, and it's, like, like it, it, it's treated as it's, like, the Omnibus manga volumes, if, if, you, if you feel what I'm saying. Well, yeah, and, and they have put those out in Japan. See, it's crazy that, man, the Japanese get everything, bro. They put out, like, an Omnibus version of the manga recently, actually, a couple years ago, and they're already out of print. You had to Jeez. buy them when they came out. They came out for, like, a month. You had to get them like that, and if not, you missed them. Yep, well, I definitely missed them because I only manga I, I have. I missed them too, bro, and I would have bought them uh, even though they were really expensive. I got all the Frieza full colors, and I only got like three of the Viz Bigs, the first three volumes of the Viz Bigs, and that's well, about it. Y- y- to get the ones I'm talking about, you would have had to order them from Japan because the ones I'm talking about are the big – they're called – um. Oh, I forgot what they were called, bro. But they're basically like replicas of the original Shonen Jump, but they're really, really big. That's the they're called like the Omnibus, but it's not really like as good as some of the other releases. You know what I'm saying? It's complicated, bro. The mangas oh. come out like 15 times. Yeah, the ones yeah. I'm referring to are called the. Let me find it here. Dragon Ball Digest Edition. That's what they're called. The So Shuhen, and they're basically Ooh. meant to look exactly like. The original Shonen Jump release, like a how they were with the size of the magazine, the big, yeah, the oh, big, my and but God. and they're loaded with chapters. Each one has like um, twenty three chapters, so it's way more than the other releases do. Yeah, those were cool to collect, bro. But they're only in Japanese, and you know, yeah. Well, I think I hope they're. I feel I. Uh, I hope I don't they don't put know. them out again, but dude, they're out of print. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, looking at just to segue into the last part of this whole thing, the box office discussion with how much money this movie has been pulling a in. A lot of money, bro. You you think that like with this budget, or not even the, just the budget, but just the profit that they've been making, you know, like worldwide, I feel like, you know, re-releasing stuff like that, like reprinting stuff like that, and then like localizing it. I yes, feel like they please. could do that. I mean, it just it pisses me off the way that Toei treats his property sometimes. Ja- Japan has guidebooks, right? And then the guidebooks, the Daizenchus have been translated to Spanish and to freaking French. Why isn't there an English one? Why don't we have That's, English guidebooks? Yeah, what what is up with that? That's we, wild. We should have the Chosenchus. It's not even that expensive to translate, bro. Come on. We should have yeah. the Chosenchus and all those guidebooks already translated for us. That would clear up a lot of stuff. We don't have that. You know, there's, there's, there used to be games that we never got. Now Heroes is finally coming over. So finally, after changing. eight years, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, things are changing. Yeah, and, like, I mean, this year, Viz is, get, it, we're, Viz is printing, what, the, the art book, I think? The art book, yes. Like, I was so happy about that, and I'm okay with that, but we already have art books. I want the guide books yeah, with, I want like, the translated guides. properly, yeah. yeah. Dragon Box Z came out, but not Dragon Box regular, like, uh, DB and GT and, and movies, and I don't yeah. know, bro. The Japan gets everything. Yeah, but here's, here's to hoping... That you know, after the hearing these numbers, I, I, I'm about I to agree. Read you guys. I hope they realize it's international now. You know. Yeah, dude. Like, I think, I think that it's. Excuse me. I think it's one of those things that they they really gotta like you know look at it. It's like, hey, like the fandom is bigger than it ever has been, and this is more merchandise that we could just keep profiting off of and all that stuff. Because, dude, like, especially the fact that it has like a very special feeling 
behind all of that stuff like you know how it hasn't been in our hands ever like officially like you know we've had translations online and whatnot from like you know people that can read japanese and understand and they translate it for us but yeah i want to actually hold it in my hands look at the pictures exactly because i don't know if you've ever seen the guidebooks before they're gorgeous the art the way the little bubbles are everywhere like why don't we have that man it's so unfair i hate it and i read spanish but I think I read English better than Spanish. You know what I same, mean? Same. Yeah. Same. We're both we're both Cuban. You're more Cuban than I am, but well, that's yeah. that's good for me and bad for you in some ways, bro. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I I don't know. I, well, well, but but your nickname is Coochie and not mine, bro. I can't call da, myself. Nah, nah. Yet you know what? I swear, if if that catches on, I'm blaming that on you good. entirely. Good. I will take responsibility for exposing you and your ego. Talking about how much Coochie you get. All ego. Right. Dude, this this you're you're making all these people think all this wrong stuff about me. I already deal with enough of that. Oh, on, on welcome a to my life, basis. bro. Welcome to my life. Bro. Oh, <laughs> you, you yeah. Eventually, you'll get big enough, bro, that people are gonna think all make up all kinds of nonsense about you. Oh, uh, you really think so? Thanks. Yeah, they're gonna say you're gay. <laughs> they haven't said that about me, obviously, but they'll say it about you. They'll say you're <laughs> gay. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm screwing around. But they'll they'll say whatever, bro. You know, they, yeah. especially after this show. It's about how Sean and Chris look good for their age. I'm gonna tell them you said that. Bro. Oh come on! I can't compliment people. Come on, dude. Not men, bro. You're Hispanic, bro. If you're which which who's Cuban? Your dad or your mom? My dad. Oh, no, no my mom. My mom is Cuban. My mom. Well, well, her dad would punch you in the face if he heard you say that. You know how Cubans are. Uh. <laughs> you know how they are, bro. Uh, well, to wrap things up, the numbers that so Very far we've been... behind the times. We've, uh. been, we've been pulling in for the, the lifetime gross theaters. Now, the source that we're using is off of boxofficemojo.com. So this is stuff that is open to the public. You can... Look this up yourself. Right. And the lifetime gross um, revenue that they've been been pulling in right now is at $21,914,777. Now, this is on a list. For anime, that's big, by the way. Just making it. It's not quite MCU level, but come on now. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, we'll get there. I would would love to see that. I don't know about that. It'll take a long time. But uh, but anime, for anime, it's big, yeah. Yeah, for anime in general. So the, the the section it's under is animation and anime. All right? And out of so from the ranks from like 1 to 100, right? Broly is currently number 3. And at number 2 and number 1 are the first two Pokémon. And movies. we should establish too those came out at the height of Pokémon's popularity when Pokémon yep. was hottest it's ever been in the late 90s early 2000s. Pokémon will never right, be hot again. Yeah, right at it the beginning. It was literally dude. pop culture. Yep, like that, and plus it was in theaters for way longer, way longer, way more theaters, way yep. more promotion. There were TV spots everywhere. I haven't yep. seen a single Dragon Ball Super Broly spot on television. Yup, and like yeah, exactly. Like look at how far this movie has come, and it's and it's literally going toe to toe with probably the next biggest franchise in the history of pop culture today, Pokemon. It, it, and the originals. It, and back then, it was humongous. Like, it, 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 you know what I'm saying? That was the biggest it's ever been. Yeah, and like, so right now, like, so, so like I said, Broly's at like two, over 21 million, almost at 22 million. Pokemon the movie 2000, that's at 43. Oof, yep. that's that's a big. That's, it's a, it's a gap, you know, but it's it's closer. And then the first movie, Pokemon first movie, is sitting at 85 million. That was pop. Bro, that was huge. I mean, I will say this. Uh, um, I don't know if it's gonna catch up, but I mean, just being in third place is great. I think it is a really it's a nice spot just to say that you're in the top three all time biggest anime. I mean, dude. I mean, in the, the U.S. You know, that's in the U.S. By the yeah, way, yeah, in the U.S. And and what we can also say is that another first that we can say that got that Broly got was that the that they this is the first time that an anime film has ever been in IMAX in, in the North United America. States. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Because, so, uh, and I will say this, um, it makes you wonder, though, what if they had put out a Dragon Ball movie in 99, 2000, 2001, when, it, when that was, you know, on Toonami? Well, how would that have done? You know, dude, it does make you wonder really about that. That's a really good question, yeah. yeah. Well, let, I mean, let's think about it. What, what was the movie that came out in that time frame, like in the year 1999? 
in Japan, nothing for Dragon Ball because it was over already. So well, no, I'm not saying for Japan, but for us, like you know, for you mean North you America. mean like a, like home video? Well, if you remember, the movies were behind because they they didn't put out Fusion Reborn until 2005, bro. Like they were really yeah. behind. Yeah. So yeah. it would have probably been like one of the cooler movies, um, or maybe the first Broly movie, but. Um, I guess the first Broly movie could have been a theatrical. <laughs> Imagine that. It could have. You know, isn't that weird? Yeah, it could have been. That's funny how that works but out. But again, that also came out late because they released the series out of order. Remember how weird it was back then? They put like the Boo Saga on DVD before the Cell Saga was finished. And then like on TV version, yeah. you had all of season five, uh, at least the TV version of that. Like it was over, but they didn't have Blu-ray. Oh, it was a mess. Or, or I'm sorry, DVD. It was a mess back then, bro. Yeah. It was nah, a mess. It, it really was. But also, really quick to to just compare to just to show you guys the 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 growth in in like the difference in how much Broly made in comparison to Resurrection F, which is the last Dragon Ball film that we've seen, right? Which by the way, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F is is at number 10 right now overall. Yeah. Right? And that is at 8 million Eight thousand three hundred and sixty-three dollars, which which was a big deal back then. Actually, that Dragon Ball made that much. Only what, like three years ago? No, four years ago. If you want to be technical, two thousand. Yeah, it was like right three and a half because it was in the summer too. Which actually yeah, yeah. is another thing that that movie came out in the summer when everybody was still out of school. Yep, yep, and it made that much. Now look at look at how Broly's doing in the middle of winter, the first month of the year, and it's. And, it, and it's top three. And people overall. are going to see it multiple times because of how good it looks. So it's yep. it's definitely interesting. I'm one of them. I saw, and I saw it in the same day, back to back, dude. Drove 40 minutes away from the theater that we were already half an hour out of from my house just to go see it in IMAX. Because I was with, like, yo, with I, different I, people? Nah, dude. Okay, so my brother came with me, uh-huh. went to see it, and then once the once 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 Goku said, but Broly. You can call me Kakarot. As soon as he said that, we freaking went, oh, and then we left. We booked it. Went uh, right to the car and went and, and literally went on a highway 40 minutes later, end up at another theater for the IMAX showing at 10 o'clock. And we just start. we sat down, we started watching it. Bam. It's hard to watch a movie the same day twice, though, too. I'm surprised. I mean, even if it's Dragon Ball, like the same day, if it's the next day, it's one thing, but the same day, uh, yeah. it's hard. And I and I need and it's like I needed to do it because I wanted I wanted to feel and experience the IMAX because again first time in North America for an anime film that this has ever happened so I wanted to be a part of that that I wanted to be a part of that you know history and say that you know yeah I I watched it regular and I watched it in IMAX and IMAX is, was a lot better I will say that like I, I don't know if it was the Cinemark um, theater that I was at but honestly oh, it's, dude, IMAX is better it is yeah like the Cinemark dude like for some reason the volumes was so off like. The audio for the for the dialogue was so low in comparison to like the soundtrack and everything else that was going on in the background. You're not the really first weird. person to complain about that, actually. And it's weird because Sean was bragging about how awesome it sounded. Like Sabbath and Raleigh spent a lot of time making that 5.1 surround. We'll see when it comes out on the home video if, if we can actually hear with the speakers. You know what I mean? If if no. if you have surround sound, the only thing that sucks is I think they formatted it for 5.1. But movie theaters are like what? Movie theaters are what? 11.2? So like it's not even like formatted properly. Because in Japan, it's all mono. So for here, Sabin and Raleigh couldn't even split it up that much. Yeah. Yeah. That's – I mean that's what the thing. When they localize, that's another thing. Uh, For – yeah. Because I I, – part of the Funimation tour that I mentioned earlier, um, we actually – we we got to meet like the sound the sound guy that like mixes and masters all of it together, and they when they say when no, we say you, localized you about, was it Raleigh or was it a different guy because there's different guys that do that. Uh, see, Raleigh I, I, works at Raleigh works at Ocatron, so maybe it wasn't him. He works directly for Ocatron. He's an employee. Okay, of yeah, no, it was it was in the Funimation uh, headquarters. So yeah, it's it a different guy. Him. Yeah, like he was showing us like how it's all lined up like he's like here's the japanese version hit play he's like okay and he rewound cool, it back though. yeah yeah and then he and then he turned the japanese off and then he and he, and he turned on all of what they do for the, our american version for north american versions he's like okay this is what the funimation dub sounds like and it's like you hear 
everything. That's why I respect Dub so much now because of what they actually do to make it sound like, you know, for home theater systems and, and movies and all that kind of stuff. Like, it is the work is is there and it and it's and it's a clear distinct difference. You think that's like, crazy? Can you imagine doing sound engineering for an actual movie like a theatrical? Because oh, remember, they're working with five channels. Theatrical movies are working with sixteen. So like when you watch something like Star Wars or something like you know that's real <laughs> freaking. Cause especially like a yeah. horror like a horror movie because you have to make sure the audio is perfect. Cause when you hear the creaking noises from the door, it's got to be in the right back panel. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Those guys deserve their money, bro. Oh, dude, for real. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But, yeah, dude, we've been going on for a long time, man. This is definitely a really good episode right here. Episode 2, Full Power Podcast. We always go in full power. But, again, I got to shout you out. Even though you, you love to roast me on my own channel, that's totally How did fine, I roast I you if I see you get a lot of coochie? How's that a bad thing? Dude, you... <laughs> it's like that line from The Simpsons. You kissed a girl. That's so gay. <laughs> You know, it's, like, you know, it's the same thing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, guys, you I'm sure you guys already know him, but of course the links to you know his channel will be in the description below. Please if you if you have not already, which is would be a surprise to me at this point in time, if you have not already subscribed to the Geek the One on One channel, go please go ahead and hit the alert button while you can, just like me, because I I try and keep up with all the content that's coming from the Geek the One on One channels, all qualities, all True stuff. My man over here, he triple sources his stuff. All right, he doesn't just make stuff up. That's to, right. You know, that's correct. You know? Actually, I actually do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. takes a lot longer to get stuff out because of that. Yeah, no BS, no BS. I so. knew about dog. I knew about that freaking fighter season two and the RPG game like a year and a half ago, bro. And I, I until you can't <sighs> report on those things, bro. Now I can all say right. I knew about it. You don't have to believe me if you don't want to, but you know I am. I am BSing you. All right, so I know what I'm gonna to talk to you about after we go off of the air for this. I don't know much. <laughs> I don't know much else, bro. I know Jiren's gonna be in Fighter Season Two, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultra yeah, everyone Instinct knows that. Goku. Yeah. That that I mean, yeah. I mean, he I, has I, to be. If you're gonna have Jiren, you gotta have Ultra Instinct. Yeah, Goku. of course. Of they, course. They, they go together. Yeah. Broly and Gogeta Blue. Now that's not confirmed, but I, I would assume. That Broly it better happen because if it doesn't, it won't. oh my god, it's a missed opportunity if it doesn't happen. You they want to. if they want people you to buy to. that game, they need to do that. You I'm got s- to. I agree. Yeah. Hell yeah, Mortal throw him in there. Yo, Ribrian would be fun to play with too. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't mind Ribrian in the game. I might get a lot of heat for that, but you know what? I'm being completely no, honest. She'd be fun to play with and beat up. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that too for sure. But if, if there's anything else that I missed out that you want to shout out for your own stuff for people to follow, nah, I don't go care. ahead. I don't no? Care. No? You're good? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you want Geekdom to return here on the Full Power Podcast, just let me know on Twitter and the comments below. Of course, all that good stuff. Like, share, subscribe. All the links to the support Uchi Games, of course, is in the description as well. You guys know the drill. Take care of yourselves. Have a good one. May the power protect you, and we'll see y'all next May the power protect you? Yes, sir. Who is that, Captain Planet? No, that's... I'm pretty sure that's Power Rangers, to be honest. Is it? May the power protect you. Come on, Zordon. Come on. Oh, yeah, it is Zordon. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. All right. Anyways, we're out of here. Bye. See ya.